right, today we are talking about the tree of life and I wanna walk you through the tree of life, including the three domains, domain bacteria, domain archaean, and domain eukarya, giving you a little bit about the differences and similarities between the groups and how we like sort of group these organisms based on their traits. So let's talk about the two prokaryotic um, domains first. Those are domain bacteria and domain archaeans. Prokaryotes, remember, do not have a membrane bound uh, sort of set of organelles or a true nucleus. And this includes bacteria and archaean. We see these about 3.5 billion years ago in our fossil record. Now, bacteria and archaean are different because of some chemical structures in and around the cells. The cell walls contain different um, structures. That's the, um, the kind of surface outside of the cell membrane. There's also some RNA differences between archaeans and bacteria um, and how they like sort of build those genetic materials as well. Antibiotics often will either um, inhibit cell wall growth or inhibit RNA from working. And so antibiotics antibiotics actually only inhibit bacteria. Um, they don't actually in inhibit things like our own cells, like eukaryotic cells, because we have these chemical differences. And then while we see extremophiles, um, different uh, microbes that can live in extreme environments in both uh, bacteria and archaean. Archaean are quite known for their extremophiles. There are archaeans that live in very salty areas and methane uh, sort of rich gases, sulfur rich gases um, without oxygen, right? Um, there are different archaeans that live at very extreme uh, temperatures. You might have seen some of these in Yellowstone at the paint pots and um, the bubbling different geysers that are very, very hot. Um, and so so these are some of the main differences between bacteria and ar archaeans. There are some commonalities between them or similarities. Um, they both do not have true nuclei. They both don't have membrane bound organelles. They often will have a circular loop of DNA um, rather than sort of our linear links like what we see in our eukaryotic cells like our own. They have lots of um, shapes so they can be round or boxy or spiral. They have very fast reproduction. So they can reproduce themselves um, in hours. Um, and so that's a very much benefit often for these particular groups. And they have diverse ways to get energy. Um, we will see in our eukaryotes that plants, animals, and fungi really only have one way to get energy and that separates them. Um, these are much more diverse and they often have well, often will have many ways to get energy. Now, if we look at our third domain, we have domain eukarya. And domain eukarya, if you go from our classification system, domains then become separated into kingdoms. And domain eukarya is separated into four kingdoms, protus, fungus, plants, and animals. And I wanna talk through uh, kind of the differences between these particular groups. Kingdom protista is kind of a catch-all group. It is. It contains things like amoebas and paramecium and all of your algaes. Um, so these are things that you've probably heard of. Um, it's catch-all because it's not really a true evolutionary group. There are certain groups that are more related to plants, um, fungus, and animals, and then some that are more like sort of um, related to themselves, right? And so we have these five supergroups. I don't want you to know much about this group other than um, Archaeoplastida um, holds like sort of the relatives to some of our algaes, red and green algae. We also have some algaes um, and ciliates down in Chromio alveolata. Um, and then we have fungi and animals. Our relatives are with the Uniconcta, so that particular supergroup. Now, I really want you to focus on the differences of these last three. So plants, fungus, and animals, how are they different? Um, so I want you to know that these particular groups are divided on our tree of life based on cellular traits and how they get energy. So when we look at kingdom plantae, their cellular traits, these are going to be cells with an outside surface called the cell wall. Um, the cell wall is made of cellulose and they also have chloroplasts and large central vacuoles that enable them to do photosynthesis. Um, many of these have a multicellular stage and multicellular structures and their energy pathway that is kind of special for plants is photosynthesis, this ability to capture sunlight and make simple sugars. Within kingdom plantate, we have four different phyla. Um, bryophytes include mosses, hornworts, and liverworts, so mosses and their relatives. Ferns include ferns and all the pteriophytes um, that are like 
um, horsetails and fern relatives. Gymnosperms are also known as conifers. So these are your cone um, producing like trees and plants. And then lastly, angiosperms are your flowering and fruiting plants that we see on earth today. Out of all four of these groups, angiosperms are the most diverse by number and diversity on the surface of the earth. And most of our agricultural products, um, think of fruits and um, grains and things like that are in this particular group as well. If we look at fungi, fungi have some structural differences. So they have cell walls, but instead of being made of cellulose like plants, cell walls of fungus are made of chitin, a different kind of sugar. Um, they also have hyphae, which are these structures that enable them to grow in um, tube-like structures, release some chemicals, and then absorb nutrients, suck up nutrients. So they'll grow and like sit on the surface of different dead and decaying materials, or even living as parasites and then suck up uh, sort of the nutrients. And these particular, um, this particular kingdom gets their energy by being heterotrophs by absorption. So they use these hyphae as almost feeding tubes to then absorb their nutrients. There are five phyla of fungus, and many of these you don't know, but they are separated based on how they reproduce and the spore structure and how um, those spores um, and reproduction goes down. You probably know a little bit about zygomycota because that's bread and fruit mold, so those are things you'll find in your kitchen. Ascomycota are the sac fungus that includes yeast and um, penicillin, so some drugs are in that particular class, and basidiomycota are the cap fungus. This includes shelf fungus, but also a lot of fungus that you eat, like um, you know, oyster mustards, sh shiitake mustards, portobellas, these kinds of um, things that you actually eat. Last a sort of group in this particular or last um, kingdom um, within the domain Eukarya is Animalia, where you belong. And animals, their cell structures are lacking some things. We don't actually have a cell wall and we don't have chloroplasts or large central vacuoles. We have small vacuoles um, in our cells. And so we don't need those things because we don't do photosynthesis. Our energy pathway is we are heterotrophs by ingestion. So we have to ingest other things. I haven't mention this so much, but each of these groups also have some developmental genes, some sets of genes that control early development that makes them develop into plants versus an animal versus a fungus. Um, and these genes are very specific to each of these groups as well. When we look at animals, um, there are 35 plus phyla of animals, but these nine phyla are the most well known. So sponges, you would see like in the ocean, maybe snorkeling. These have no true tissues, so just cells uh, filtering water typically, and they are sessile. Cnidarians are corals and jellyfish. Um, include um, a lot of things in that group with stinging cells and tentacles and things like that. So they are known for that. Mollusks um, are often um, containing a shell of some sort or a radula, a mantle secreted uh, sort of radula. And that's like kind of a tongue-like structure in some of them that allows them to like lap up um, different things. Sometimes the shells can be reduced and certain kinds of squid um, in those groups are even disappear altogether. Um, but a lot of them, like your clam species and things like that, will have those um, shells. There are three groups of worms, and they are divided by their body cavities. Um, acelomates do not have a body cav cavity, and they are flat. They're known as flatworms. Think of like tapeworms and flukes. Roundworms have a pseudocelomate, so kind of a half coelomate, um, and those are called roundworms, like Ascaris, and there's some other parasites um, that are roundworms. Annelida have a full coelomate, or a full body cavity and segments. Those are things like earthworms or leeches that you see um, around yourself. The most successful animal group by number and by diversity on planet Earth is arthropods. This includes your crustaceans, your insects, your millipedes and centipedes, and then all of your arachnids as well, your spiders, um, ticks, and things like that. All of this group, they all have an exoskeleton, so an outside um, body covering segments, and they can molt um, very uh, readily. Echinodermata are like these sea stars with five-sided um, radial cement 
symmetry. And lastly, chordates. This is the group that humans belong to, have some things like a nerve cord and a notochord cord that become backbones. So this includes a lot of your fishes, your frogs, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and then your mammals. So that's all I want to say about Tree of Life. I will see you next time.